Hi, my name is Subhay Sharma and I'm part of Cisco TAC EMEA routing team. Today, we will be discussing how PFR version 3 discovers the external interfaces on spoke border routers. Uh, one of the main applications of performance routing is WAN load balancing. And to achieve this, PFR needs to identify all the available external links. In PFR version 2, a site's WAN links or the external interfaces are manually defined on every site's master controller router. This approach works fine if there are very few sites to be configured, but the complexity increases as the number of the uh, number of those sites increases as this configuration will then be required to be manually done on each site. Even managing every site configuration in time becomes difficult. In performance uh, routing version 3, one of the features that have been introduced is the ability to automate this discovery process. This is done by using smart probes which performs auto discovery of the interfaces on all spoke sites. These are not to be confused with our IPSLA probes and they are normal UDP ports which uses 18,000 as the source port and 19,000 as the destination port number. These are sent by the hub master controller and they are destined for the master router at the spoke location. Even when there is no traffic flowing between the master hub site and the remote site, these external interfaces can still be discovered. As shown in this uh, diagram, the central site, it sends the probes on all available paths available on the border routers. The branch routers, when they receive these probes, they, discovers, they discover the PFR path names and the external interfaces on the branch site. Uh, let's just uh, go through some basic information about the smart probes. These probes use so source address as the uh, loopback address of the master controller on the sender side, and the destination address is the master controller loopback address on the spoke side. The frequency of these probes without the actual traffic flow between the hub and the spoke side is 10 probes spaced uh, 20 milliseconds apart in the first 500 milliseconds and another similar 10 probes in the next 500 millisecond. Thus, 20 packets per second for channels without traffic is achieved in the case when there is no traffic flowing between the hub and the spoke site. When there is actual traffic uh, being sent uh, between the two sites, the frequency of these probes are reduced and the probes are sent every one by third of the monitor interval that is every 10 seconds by default. We will be using this setup in our lab to simulate the smart probes being sent from the hub router and received on the spoke master controller router. R3 is going to act as the master controller router on the hub side. R4 and R5 are hub border routers on, on the hub side. R9 is our spoke master router as well as the spoke border router. As shown in this output, the tunnel 100 on the border router R4 is manually configured as external interface because the external interfaces on the master controller router on the hub side is still configured manually. The smart probes are only used to discover the external interfaces on the spoke side. So R3 being the hub master controller is configured to use tunnel 100 on the R4 as the external interface and tunnel 200 on the R5 as the second external interface. This R4 and R5 are our border routers on the hub side.
On R9 spoke side, there is no explicit configuration required to identify external interfaces as they will be auto discovered from hub master controller router using smart probes as discussed earlier. So on R9 we see in this output that tunnel 100 and tunnel 200 are discovered as external interfaces. They are being discovered using the smart probes which were sent by the router R3 acting as the hub master controller on the hub side. A uh, little more about the smart probes. So we use the NetFlow configuration on the border master controller which is R9 in our lab topology. And as we can see in this diagram, in this output, the source address is being used as the loopback address of the hub master controller which is 10.3.3.3 and the destination address of these probes are set to the loopback address of the master controller on the spoke side which is our R9. So the destination address is set as 10.9.9.9. .9 .9 .9. On R9 spoke site, there is no explicit configuration required to identify external interfaces as they will be auto discovered from hub master controller router using smart probes as discussed earlier. So as shown in this output, we see that on R9 which is our border master controller router, we see we uh, the tunnel 100 and tunnel 200 are discovered as external interfaces using smart probes which was sent by the hub master controller R3. On R9, if we want to see more information about the smart probe sent from the hub master controller, we have configured NetFlow on the device and we can see in this output that the source address of these probes are set to the loopback address of the master controller router on the hub side, which is our router R3 and the loopback address is 10.3.3.3. This IP address is used as the source address for the smart probes sent to the spoke router. And the destination address of the smart probes are configured as the loopback address of, of the master controller router on the spoke location, which is the R9. And hence it is set as 10.20.9.9.9. In this output, we have configured NetFlow on the spoke router to understand more about these smart probes and as we can see in this output the IP address used as source for these smart probes is listed as the loopback address of the hub master controller and they, they, we can see that as listed as 10.3.3.3 similarly for the destination address of the smart probes it is listed as 10.20.9.9.9 which is the loopback address configured on the master controller on the spoke side. I hope this uh, video has been informative and helpful to you. Thanks for your time.